Hi, welcome back and uh, hopefully to what is going to be a short video on Lincoln Path Monitoring. Uh, this is this is born out of a uh, problem I had to solve recently, um, where I had two DCs, as is in the as is in the picture. Uh, we had a common layer two behind it, and we had a fibre connection between it. So you've effectively got a HA pair, got an active and a passive, but they're spread across data centres, and they've got, both got their own unique ISPs. So in the event that we have this ISP fail, this interface here is still up so link monitoring just won't cut it because link monitoring will say well my interface is still up so I'm going to stay active which means that we have then um, this failure of, of connectivity from our, from our layer 2 behind it so all our hosts can't get out. If however we set the path monitor we can set a path monitor on here to 8888 which is going to use the routing table for this firewall it's going to try and get to 8888 through ISP1. I mean, all the 8s is the, is the typical sort of, when everybody tries to ping something in order to see if they've got internet connectivity, they generally default to 8888. You could use something else. You could use the uh, the IP of the ISP. You could use um, anything sort of north of this router, really. But because we now have no response from 8888, because this DC, uh, this ISP, sorry, has gone down on this DC. That will then trigger the failover, and it will fail over to our our secondary DC, and our common layer two. Then will have connectivity because they will go up up through there. Um, it's very you see it configured on occasion. I don't think this is necessarily a particularly common. Um, deployment these days but it's still it's still seen in a lot of places and it, it's helpful for other things if anywhere pretty much where you have a dependency on HA or or anything like that that wouldn't necessarily mean that if it failed it could fail on an upstream um, upstream device or upstream connectivity and not necessarily locally not directly down I mean link monitors are still important as well so if this link was to go down you'd still want your link monitor to um, to fail over as well so what we'll do is we'll jump over to the firewalls and we'll just see how we're going to configure this okay so this is our active firewall and um, as, a, as a side note as well the link and path monitoring is something that isn't synced across so that won't be so if we configure it on this side we'll have to configure it on the other side as well Okay, so we're going to go to the link monitoring here, and initially, some of the, mis the, the misconfigurations I see occasionally is uh, people think it's enabled, and that's okay, but we need to give it a, a link group. So we can enable it, and if we look into enable it, we can see we've got failure condition of any or all. That refers specifically to the link group beneath it. So we're going to create our, our link group, we're going to create the link group outside and I believe our interface on the outside is ETH11. Now in this particular instance, we would have ETH11 and that would be any or all. It wouldn't make any difference. If, however, we had an aggregate, so we had an aggregate interface at the front, which is what you'll see in most deployments that covered, say, ETH1 and 1.2, we could have either any, which is either one of these fails, and then that will trigger the failover event, or all. So that depends on your risk, your risk appetite, and, and whether you think that you can run just on one, on one interface. But we don't have that here. We have a single uh, interface outside, so we can have any or all. Doesn't really matter. And then we are going to create our inside, which is our ETH one two, and again any or all. Okay, now this starts to come into play. So any or all of them what we really want is any because we don't want to wait for all of them to go down uh, if you wanted all of them to go down um, I guess you'd have a catastrophic failure and probably the power's gone off at the DC or something okay so then we're going to come down to our path monitoring here so again we've got the same options again we have any or all for any or all of our path groups underneath and then we have our virtual wire path, VLAN path, and virtual router path. And that's dependent upon your interface. So if you've got a VLAN interface, you're going to use that. And if you've got virtual wire, then it's going to be 
using this one. However, we're going to use our virtual router path. And then it's going to ask us for the name of the virtual router, which is default in our case, which would be, but then any uh, extra VRs that you have configured under virtual routers you could use. And then we're going to have the any or all condition again. So we could say uh, destination IP group DNS. Okay, and we're going to dot eight, and and then we could have eight dot eight uh, dot four dot four. Okay, and then we can say. Um, we can say any or all of these, so if any of those fail, or we could go with all. Okay, and we can add multiple destination groups as well. So we can say we want, um, I don't know, I have uh, so quad nine for instance, quad nine DNS, nine dot nine dot nine. Okay, and again, in this particular instance, because we've only got one, uh, one entry then we've, we're any or all is kind of immaterial. Okay. And then we'll commit that. On here. And once we've committed that, then we'll see that our path monitors are configured and we can see that we are, we're gonna be monitoring not only the path, but the link as well. So if we took a link down, then that would, um, that would also cause the, uh, the failover. Okay, now that's committed, we can see that even though we, uh, we've got it committed on one side, we just refresh this, um, there's, no, there's no difference. It's, um, it's exactly the same uh, as it was before. It's not configured. If we go back to the active, we can see it's configured there. So you need to configure that on the other side as well. Once that's configured on the other side, then they'll both do what they need to do. You could argue in active passive you wouldn't necessarily need to configure it on the other side. You just have it on your on your main uh, on your main one. Um, but then I guess you'd have no fail back. Um, it, yeah. So, but that's always assuming the other side are recovered. So, that's link and path monitoring. Okay. So we're going to um, going to demonstrate the the link monitor going down, and we'll see the, the logs as well. And you'll see where I've been. Testing this previously because I had some issues with my ESXi, so all my lab is in an ESXi lab, and sometimes it doesn't react quite as quickly as I might like it to. Okay, so at the minute though, currently we have we've got the passive and the active, and what we're going to do is we, I'm going to pull the uh, the interface on the active, so I'm just going to disconnect that on the ESXi. You can't see me do that, but I'm doing it. Trust me. Okay, and then we'll see how long this actually takes before it works it out. And then we've gone non-functional. So we have link down first. So we've got a link down. And that will be the status here. And then if we go to this that's showing itself as being passive, but is in fact active. So we come to here, we see the non-functional link down as well. Now, once we go back to here, if I reinstate that interface, like so. So if I reinstate that interface, that will eventually go through uh, initializing and that will be reflected as well on this side if we catch it quick enough we didn't catch it quick enough unfortunately okay and then state synchronization completion so that now it's got its state synchronized so it's got its session synchronized and then if we go to the monitor tab on here and we go to system then we can see that we've got the HA we've got the link monitor down and we have the path monitor down as well and the path monitor is down because that's how it's getting there um, we saw the failover was very quick. We're still passive on this side. If I wanted then to go back and just fail that back, I've got two options really. So I can suspend, so that's a manual process. Now that's done, then just make it av available again. And then if we come back to here, we'll see that we are now active on this side again. And if we come back here, just to say that Within our general settings for our HA as well, we can have preemptive. So when the other one came back up, if we have preemptive set, it would then, based on the device priority, it would either take take back over or, or not do. There's also the the concept of just have a, a just a quick sort of digression. There's also the concept of the HA timer settings. 
these can be changed so you can um, allow more want well, more time really so we've got aggressive and then we have advanced and if you go for aggressive aggressive is the settings um, I believe oh, the settings here load aggressive uh, or load recommended so those are recommended settings we can load the aggressive settings there or you can create your own settings so that you can get it to to fail over quicker okay so that's the difference between link monitoring and path monitoring and just saying that it's very important within your active passive certainly if you've got that kind of uh, that kind of environment where the the connectivity to the internet or connectivity to wherever you're that's important to you is not necessarily going to always cause the interface to go down um, when you're monitoring the interface um, this is the important thing. Always remember to put it on both. You're going to have to put it onto both firewalls if you want it on both firewalls, or if you just want your passive, your active firewall, your primary firewall, to be doing, to do this, and then fail over to your secondary, and then stay there. Then, um, then that's what you'd do. Okay. So, if you made it this far, well done. Try to keep it under 10 minutes. I don't think it's worked. Um, and please, very much, please like and subscribe. It does really help. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.